your career is interesting, the way you've sort of, for decades, you've straddled business and politics and you've done a bit of this and a bit of that. And, yeah. and it interests me because <clears throat> there aren't many people on the front benches yeah. in that building over there behind us at yeah. the moment with any business experience at all. Is Parliament yeah. worse for that? Yes, it is. It genuinely is. I mean, the, the, age, the average age is lower. People have less experience of life as yep. a result, whether in business or in public service or in charitable work, whatever. I mean, you know, nostalgia isn't what it used to be. I give all that, <laughs> you know. And, and the truth is that when I went in first in the House of Commons in 83, I had my own business. Um, I wasn't particularly aware of what the salary was that you got. It didn't really make much difference. Uh, but I was not alone by any means. I, I served with people who'd served in the war. Yeah. Uh, distinguished records, people who built big businesses, people like Peter Walker, you know, um, and many others, Michael Heseltine and so on. Who, yeah. You know, these were very successful people. And Margaret, you know, herself was somebody who, you know, had had a pretty decent career uh, and, of course, married um, to a man who himself was a pretty senior businessman. So, I do think, sadly, that this um, sense in which, you know, we've got more and more special advisers turning up in safe seats and suddenly finding themselves on the green benches in their late 20s and early 30s is actually sort of reducing the effectiveness of the House of Commons because mm. there just isn't the experience there no, it's, that there um, used to be. It's quite bland, isn't it? Really? it? It is, I'm afraid. It is bland. But I think there's a bigger change, which is part of social media, and I think this isn't appreciated enough. Um, you know Edmund Burke's famous phrase about, uh, I am your delegate, not your representative. What he meant was, you elect me, yeah. and I then go to Parliament, and I do the best that I possibly can for what I believe the country needs. And sometimes that might not be quite the view of the majority of my voters, but I'm there to do what yeah. I think is better. Nowadays, because of social media, Every MP is absolutely focused on the local ticket. It's quite interesting. You've seen in the last couple of weeks uh, a revolt over whether we want to frack or not. Now a revolt over whether we want onshore wind. Uh, and, or houses, a third, or, yeah, and another yeah. favourite one, which is uh, should we basically just sweep away housing targets and let the NIMBYs get away with it, you know? All of this is because of this massive concentration that MPs have to have. There's no getting away from this, mm. you know, on the seat. I'm going to lose my seat because uh, they think, actually, funny enough, they won't. Just, they won't just because, for yeah, example, you, they you, take you, a contribution. Yeah, you get 150 fracking. emails overnight. Yeah, like, so everyone yeah, thinks exactly. that. And yeah, no, no. Now, you yeah. walked away in 97. You, yep. you, you, yeah, you, yeah. you didn't uh, stand up there and you were back to business. And, yeah. and that could have been the end, you see, of Steve Norris's political career. But it wasn't <laughs> because he decided he just had to have a go once, twice, almost three times, and maybe again, I don't know, yep. at London Mayor. But yeah. it was tough, wasn't it? Because you were standing against a Labour Party in 2000, yeah. you were in the ascendancy. Yes, quite. With, with the longest honeymoon period I've ever seen. Yeah. And, of course, against Ken, who, yes. you know, I, I, he sat in this chair, he's done talking yeah, yeah. about... And he is, a, you know, he is the cheeky chappy and all the rest yeah, of yeah. it. Yeah, I enjoyed his company, actually. Yeah, I, yes, I, I, you know, I, I agree. <laughs> you, you, you can disagree with many... Of course. Gosh, you, yes. you would think half of it's crackers, but you can't yeah, really yeah. dislike him. Well, I think he's the best mayor we've had among the three. Uh, I mean, he's the reason we got the Olympics in 2012. He's the reason that, uh, you know, the city is what it is. He was the man who basically made Transport for London work, took 12 different agencies, which I had to work with when I was Minister for Transport, with a big responsibility for London. <coughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, in my view, he, he, he is the man to watch. No, for me, I've always been fascinated by kind of urbanism. You know, by the end of this decade, 70% of the world's population is going to live in a city. And cities can either be like some of the great Indian cities with these massive, you know, areas of utter squalor and deprivation mm -hmm. and massive riches in the centre, or, funnily enough, um, you know, where, for example, you've got decent public transport systems, just a start. You get the people without jobs to the jobs without people. Citizens start to work. So, for example, the two things I'm proudest of in my time was the Julia Line extension, yep. which completely invigorated East London and means that actually you could have the Olympics in East London. And the second, of course, is Crossrail, where I took the first bill through now the Elizabeth. Yeah, I mean, Crossrail's fantastic. Yeah, it's Steve, amazing. But 
How long did it take? Well, it took a long time. But <laughs> let me tell you, it, it took a long time because my, uh, the response I used to get when I took this great scheme to the Treasury was the classic Liam Byrne line. Terrific, Steve, but I'm afraid there's no money. That was the first. Don't spend money. Just yeah. don't spend money. Uh, then, actually, when Labour said, what a ridiculous proposition to not approve the, 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 the Crossrail programme, they then took 11 years to actually... Um, started Gosh. and it was only because Ken, with his London hat on, insisted that they did, no, 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 and they uh, knew they couldn't disappoint Ken. Saying, you're being very generous to Ken Livingstone. It's very interesting to hear that. No, it's very interesting to hear that. Now you're still involved with with yeah. infrastructure. It's yeah, still very one of the much. That you do. Yeah. HS2. <laughs> I mean, it's a huge sum yeah, of money. It's a huge project for yeah. what I think is a very marginal benefit. I wouldn't say that. Funnily enough, um, and, you know, my wife says, as soon as you start talking about this sort of stuff, I just glaze over, I mean, and she really does, you know. Um, the, 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 the case is made for capacity. It's not about speed. One of the things that Andrew um, Adonis, who was Labour's uh, uh, Transport Secretary, uh, always admits these the, days... The Ramona-in-chief. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could say that, and I'm absolutely with you on that, as you probably know. Um, nonetheless, Andrew, uh, when he was Transport Secretary, was coming out of um, St Pancras, where there's a wonderful plaque in, uh, in granite that says um, uh, HS1... Opened by the Queen. Ironically, it doesn't have to say which Queen. Sadly, uh, a late Queen yeah. now. But nonetheless, opened by the Queen, and that was it, you know. And, and Andrew said, you know, I wanted there to be a kind of network of high-speed rail, like there is in the rest of Europe. And if I may say so, I've seen you holding a big banner that said we should have a network of high-speed rail, because I remember seeing it. No, 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 we'll go there, but, you know. No, I've travelled all over Europe on yeah, high-speed. Quite, but but yeah. remember, the geography is different. Yes, of course. No, entirely I, different. And yeah. you can go from Houston right into Manchester Piccadilly to the heart of the business district. I think it's two hours, seven minutes. Yeah, that's right. So, but I just wonder whether we so should... So it's spend... not speed. It's not speed. That's the yeah. point. It's capacity. Yes. And what you do... Yes. I get that. Yeah. But surely couldn't we extend the, 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 the length of the trains, the mm. stations? I just no. I, I worry, Steve, it's going to cost 150 billion quid to get to Manchester 20 minutes more quickly. No, that, that, that is a wonderful line, but it's not the reality. Funny enough, the bigger issue... I mean, I'm, I'm basically a long-term supporter of London, Birmingham, Manchester... I was never a supporter of Birmingham to Leeds, and I said it to successive transport secretaries and, indeed, chief executives of HS2, HS, uh, HS and I'm very glad that finally the pennies dropped and it's not going to happen. That's saving an absolute shed load mm. of money into billions. No, well, I think it's about capacity. It frees up traffic on what's called the West Coast Main Line. That means we can put more freight on rail, which is really important. We get more decent spotting, stopping services up the line. Um, and, of course, what it also means is that we can and then link into a Northern Powerhouse Rail. There's a train operating franchise and by called... the time this will um, all be built... The Trans Pan Am Express, <laughs> and it takes an hour to go 40 miles. This is That's not, not going to be 2036 20, before this is Oh, hey, look, I'll probably be dead. I'm certainly <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll only know. be getting on with my yeah. Zimmer friend. Well, I don't think I really agree with you on that. But I'll tell you what interests me. You're very much... You've very much been on the sort of socially liberal wing of the Conservative yeah. Yeah, yeah. Party. Uh, um, but interestingly, you were a bit of a fan of a friend of mine, Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. And what he yeah, did here, what he and Bill Bratton, the cop, yes. did in New York, the broken windows theory. Yeah. When you look at crime in London today, it is disturbing, isn't it? Uh, it it's very disturbing. Uh, ironically, in 2000, we had a problem with crime. And, you know, I, I remember one of our slogans was, uh, if New York's mayor can cut crime, why can't London's? Mm. Um, and because I did feel that, that, well, I knew that was what London has cared about at the time. In the intervening two decades, if you like, it was less of a problem. So that when Boris, for example, finished his term, yeah. I mean, it wasn't particularly glorious, but it was didn't do much damage, to be absolutely no. honest. Um, crime was at a reasonably satisfactory levels. It wasn't, it wasn't heading the local news every night. Now it is, uh, with a mayor who, you know, sort of trumpets um, his you know, great sort of concern about this issue, but does absolutely nothing positive about it, apart from 
picking on Cressida Dick and firing her. Yeah. Now, you know, if you heard what, um, you know, the, what's he called, what Tom Windsor's job, I forget what his job title is, but the he's, yeah. he's, he's the man who actually, yeah. if you like, regulates yeah. police activity. He has been scathing about the way Khan acted in that case. And I'm sorry to say, as far as I'm concerned, Khan has literally nothing to be proud of in terms of the record of violence, particularly black on black violence among young black men. You know, I, I chair a charity down the Old Kent Road, one of the most deprived parts of London, where we get young people off the street. We do it by... Op we, we offer them basketball and table tennis and, and general kind of support. Yeah. Get over 4,000 visits a month to this, to this Good. place. Good. And I've always thought, that, you know, if you want to do something about <coughs> crime, then why don't you start by doing a lot more for the young people of this city who so mm. often are left standing on street corners well, thinking maybe about... Maybe, you're, maybe you've got this all wrong, Steve. You see, real well, crime. Now, yeah. over there's the embankment. Yeah. Right. If you go along there at two o'clock in the morning, yeah, at twenty six miles an hour, yeah, you will get a speeding ticket. It seems to me that he, that, that the real criminals now in cars, London, anybody that wants to have a motor car. Um, I uh, think twenties plenty sounds like a great. It's a great sort of phrase, but it's pretty meaningless. Uh, and I'm absolutely straightforward about this. I think it's a complete waste of time and money. It absolutely takes distracts efforts away from the real criminal activity in this city that we ought to be concerned about, which is the rising uh, advent of really serious violence against anybody, for example, getting out of a nice car. Targeted or crime. Seen targeted crime yeah. is on the increase. Yeah. And for me, that's the real thing that Khan yeah. has done please, absolutely nothing please about. Slogan, uh, please slogan, please A-frames the other day. Yeah. Get, uh, the police telling us don't wear smart watches in public. Well, oh. that's, that's surrendering, isn't it? Yes, it is. It absolutely is. I mean, I, and you should be able to drive a car, OK? Maybe, you know, I say, wow, I wouldn't mind one of those one of those days, you know. But, but, but the idea that you mustn't do it because you are making yourself a visible victim is just a I know. I know. I, awful. Yeah. yeah, and you, Les, um, to, getting back to cars, going out to rural parts of Kent and Hertford. The whole thing's mad. But can I just say, here's the spectacle. Here is a Labour mayor who taxes poor people who can't afford to upgrade their cars or their vans, but doesn't tax me, because my car complies. I imagine yours might. Yeah. You know, that's appalling. If a Tory had done that, my goodness, you can imagine what <laughs> Labour would have said. <laughs> this is a Labour mayor no, who know. put sloganising and with a, an eye on perhaps, you know, replacing Starmer one of these days, if he can get rid of uh, Andy Burnham first. Yeah, I think you Burnham, know. I, I'd fancy Burnham's chances more personally. Well, he's an Evertonian, so in know. my view, he can do no wrong. <laughs> You said the Tory party. There's no Tory party. There's no Conservative party there. Come on. They are, they are high tax. They are big state. They are almost unlimited immigration. Uh, they have launched a war on small business. I mean, when you went into that House of Commons in 1983, the Conservative Party was the very opposite to every single one of those things. They've gone, haven't they? No, I don't think they've gone. But I think if they carry on as they are, then there's every chance that they will be gone. There'll be a rump. They'll do what happened to the Liberal Party in 1918. That'll be the end of it. No, I think the truth is that what Jeremy Hunt is doing with Rishi Sunak's support is recognising that these are absolutely unique times and that, unfortunately, thanks to the Trust Kwarteng budget and the way it was actioned and the lack of rolling the pitch and the lack of understanding of what was actually at stake here, we're now being forced to do things, which ironically the markets do approve of. I mean, you know, the sterling is now much better yeah. off than it was even before Quasi stood up. Would this save the Tories? Well, I think, you know, the irony is that uh, when times are hard, all the evidence is that people prefer the devil they know than the devil they don't. And you look in 18 months, you know, Harold Wilson famously, a week's a long time in politics. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably out on a limb here against maybe even men, many people in my own party. I know this. But funnily enough, I remember 1992. I knew I was going to win my seat. I had a 20,000 yeah. majority. But I also thought we'd <clears> lose. <throat> and in the event, the reason we didn't, nobody loved us after we'd been in no, for 13 no, years and we'd but... replaced Margaret with John mm, and so mm. on. They liked it because they said, yeah, um, Tories are boring as hell. But these guys, ah, John Smith's shadow budget, Neil mm, Kinnock, mm. you know, a lot of words. Is there a lot of meaning? Well, it could and, happen, you know, yeah. Because I look, I look yeah. at, you know, the Starmer's Labour Party. Yeah. They've got two big things that they say they do that we're not going to do. One of them is they say, we're going to have a full tax. Well, we just shot that fox. Yeah. Right or wrong, we shot yeah. it. 
The second one is they say we're going to abandon non-DOM status, and with the money we're going to spend a huge amount extra on the uh, on, you know, on the NHS. So hang on a second, sunshine. When you abandon <laughs> non-DOM you status, know, do you honestly think people are just going to stay here and say, crackers. "Okay, it's crackers. it's crackers." You see, he he still can't, he can't give it up. He <laughs> loves politics. And he's been a great guest. On ah, it's a pleasure. Place. Great Thank to you. see you.